Hi friends, I have this light orange ball and this heavy green ball with me. If I drop both these balls from the same height, which one do you think is going to hit the ground first? Is it the light orange ball or the heavy green ball? The answer is coming up in this video because this video is about gravity and free fall. Before we do our experiment, let's first measure the mass of the two balls here. As you can see, the mass of the small orange ball is 10 gram and the mass of the big green ball is 100 gram. As we saw using our measuring instrument, the mass of the green ball is 10 times more than the mass of the orange ball. Now what do you think about their weights? Remember, the formula for weight is mass into acceleration due to gravity. Now the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the earth is 9.8 meters per second square. Let's approximate it to 10 meters per second square to make the calculations easy. So let's calculate the weight of the light orange ball first. Its mass is 10 grams. So we need to convert that to SI units. That's 0 0.01 kg. And if you multiply it by the value of G, we get 0.1 Newton as the weight of this orange ball. Similarly, we can calculate the weight of the green ball. So the mass is 0.1 kg and on multiplying we get the weight as 1 Newton. So again you can see that the weight of this green ball is 10 times the weight of the orange ball. Now when we drop them, which one do you think is going to hit the ground first? Let's try it out. Did you see that both the light orange ball and the heavy green ball hit the ground at the same time? Since it happened really fast, let's take a look at the slow motion replay. As you can see, in the slow motion replay, both the balls hit the ground at exactly the same time. How do we explain that objects having different masses or different weights fall at the same time? You might have been thinking that the green ball should hit the ground first because it's much heavier than the orange ball here. Well, this was Aristotle's theory that heavier objects fall faster than lighter ones. And this theory went unchallenged for almost 2000 years till a scientist by the name of Galileo disproved it using a simple experiment that we just did. Legend has it that Galileo went up the famous Leaning Tower of Pisa and he dropped two balls, one light and a heavy one. And all the crowd gathered there saw that both the balls hit the ground at the same time. Let's look at the basics. When I drop these two balls, why do they fall down? Due to gravity. Earth pulls all the objects downwards. Now let's talk about free fall. Do you know what does free fall mean? The strict definition says free fall is the motion of a body where gravity is the only force acting on it. So what do you think? Our experiment with the orange and green ball was it an example of free fall? Let me show you some more examples and you tell me whether they are free fall or not. Remember, free fall is the motion of a body where gravity is the only force acting on it. Is the ball falling down on the earth an example of free fall or not? What do you think? Oops! If you accidentally drop something like this, hopefully not your phone, is this an example of free fall or not? Is the ball falling down on the moon? Is this an example of free fall or not? Landing with a parachute. Is this an example of free fall or not? Landing of an aeroplane. Is this an example of free fall or not? Well, strictly speaking, it's only the ball falling on the moon. Now, why is that? because the moon has no atmosphere. There's no air resistance. So the only force pulling the ball down is the moon's gravity. Hence, it's an example of free fall. 
Now if you look at the case of the ball falling on the earth. Since the air resistance is pretty small, we can neglect it. So then earth's gravity will be the only force here. So approximately we can say it's under free fall. Similarly, if you accidentally drop something, Oops. hopefully it's not your phone and the object is not very light, then we can again ignore the air resistance. So this is also approximately free fall. Now what about the parachute and aeroplane landing? In a parachute, the air resistance is pretty large. That's why the parachute comes slowly down. So it's not an example of free fall. And same in the aeroplane, the wings and engines are controlling the descent of the aeroplane. So there's an upward force. And both in the parachute and the aeroplane, gravity is not the only force. So these two are not examples of free fall. To understand the role of air resistance, I'm going to drop this light orange ball and this sheet of white paper here from the same height. Which one do you think is going to hit the ground first? So let's go ahead and try it out. It's due to air resistance. The paper has a large surface area. So the air resistance is high. The paper is light. Its weight is low. So we can't neglect the air resistance compared to the weight. So is the paper in free fall? What do you think? The correct answer is no. Because there are two forces acting here. The force of gravity and the air resistance. Now let's look at this small orange ball. The surface area here is small. So the air resistance is low and we can neglect it compared to the weight of the ball. So the orange ball is approximately under free fall. So that's why this paper takes a longer time to fall because the air resistance slows it down and the orange ball hits the ground first. But if we did this experiment in a vacuum chamber with no air resistance, then what do you think is going to happen? Both the paper and the orange ball are going to hit the ground at the same time. Let's go back to our light orange ball and heavy green ball experiment. The surface area of the green ball is larger compared to the small orange ball. But the air resistance is pretty low compared to the weight of the green ball. So we can neglect the air resistance for the green and orange ball here. Gravity is the only force pulling these two balls down. So these balls are under free fall. But the question still remains that why do both the balls hit the ground at the same time? The green ball is much heavier compared to the light orange ball. So the force of gravity is higher for the green ball as compared to the orange ball. But still they fall at the same time. Let's take a closer look. So let's see what do we have here. Remember we had measured the mass of the two balls. The mass of the orange ball is 10 grams, 0 0.01 kg. And the mass of the green ball is 100 grams, 0 0.1 kg. So the mass of the green ball is 10 times the mass of the orange ball. We had calculated their weight using the formula mg. The weight of the orange ball is 0.1 Newton and the weight of the green ball is 1 Newton. Once again, the weight of the green ball is 10 times the weight of the orange ball. And weight is the force of gravity. So the force of gravity is 10 times on the green ball as compared to the orange ball. Since there is a net force downwards, the two balls are under acceleration. Let's calculate the acceleration of the two balls here using the acceleration formula, force by mass. The force of gravity on the green ball is 10 times the force of gravity on the orange ball. But the mass of the green ball is also 10 times the mass of the orange ball. So if you calculate the numbers, we get acceleration of the orange ball as 10 meters per second square. And the acceleration of the green ball is also 10 meters per second square. In fact, 
all objects independent of their mass experience the same acceleration when they are in free fall near the surface of the earth. Now why is that? What's the intuition here? So heavier objects have a greater force of gravity but they also have a greater mass, a greater inertia. So all objects end up experiencing the same acceleration. Here are the three equations of motion. We can use one of these equations to calculate the time of free fall. I have a video on equations of motion. So if you haven't watched that already, do check it out. Now let's go ahead and apply these equations. We want to find the time of free fall of the orange ball and green ball. First, let's write down the data. When I drop the orange ball and green ball, what is the initial velocity of each ball? That's right, initial velocity u is 0. As we saw earlier, the acceleration a of both balls is 10 meters per second square. This is the acceleration due to gravity. Let's say I drop the two balls from a height of 1 meter. So the distance or displacement s is 1 meter. We want to find the time of free fall for each ball. That is the time for the ball to hit the ground. So time t is unknown. From these three equations of motion, which equation should we use? That's right, the second equation of motion, s equals ut plus half a t square. The simple method is you want to choose the equation that has all the symbols that we know and we want to find. We know initial velocity u, acceleration a and displacement s and we want to find time t. And the equation that has all these four symbols u, a, s and t is the second equation of motion. Substituting the values in the second equation and solving, we get the time t as square root of 0.2 which is equal to 0.48 seconds. So both the orange and green ball hit the ground after 0.48 seconds. If you are still not convinced that different objects having different mass or different weight reach the ground at the same time, let's visualize it in a different way. This time we won't use free fall. I'm going to use the example of a car and a truck. Now let's imagine the car and the truck are having a race and the truck is 10 times heavier than the car. And if both of them have the same engine, which one do you think is going to reach the finish line first? That's right, it's going to be the car. Because the engine on both is the same, so they can generate the same force. But the mass of the car is lighter. So it will accelerate more and win the race. But now let's say the engine of the truck is 10 times more powerful than the engine of the car. So which one do you think will reach first now? That's right, both the car and the truck are going to reach the finish line at the same time because acceleration is force by mass. So the force of the engine of the truck is 10 times more than the car but the mass of the truck is also 10 times more. So both of them will have the same acceleration, the same increase in velocity and both will reach the finish line at the same time. Again, we are ignoring air resistance and ground friction here. Let's place the concept of free fall on our concept board. And remember, as we learnt in this video, all objects, independent of their mass, in free fall, fall with the same acceleration due to gravity. Thanks for watching.